Welcome to the Meanwhile at the Castle Learn to Knit Socks live video series. If you are watching this video and wondering what happened to the first one that we cre that we recorded live, well, I lost it. I hit delete on accident. So we're recording again. So hopefully second time's a charm, the charm. And we are going to get started. Knitting socks can be a really fun and enjoyable project because it's really portable. Um, it can be something that you can just take with you and do that's not a big project that um, gets in the way, that's too bulky. But what's really nice about socks also, if you're just knitting vanilla socks, which means that it's all just plain stockinette stitch, no patterning here on the sock, then uh, it's a really great project for a beginner as well as kind of what we'd say call mindless knitting where you don't have to think so much about it. Once you get started knitting them, you'll be knitting a whole bunch of socks and you'll always want to have a pair of socks on the needles. So let's go over the beginning, the anatomy of, anatomy of a sock. So we have what we're going to be teaching you. We're gonna be doing cuff down and this is your cuff and the cuff is where you have ribbing. We are going to be doing two by two ribbing and I'll tell you what that means in a minute. And then we have the leg of the foot. And then we have the heel flap, the heel turn. And this section right here is a gusset. And this is where you have more stitches to allow for the wider part of your foot so it doesn't have to uh, stretch so tight across your foot. And then we have the foot of the sock and the toe. And so in this video, we are going to go over casting on your sock and knitting the cuff and then what to do for your leg. So we're going to get started with how to determine your cast on number. So I have the diagram that we have on our website, meanwhileatthecastle.com. You can go print that, and if you have already printed this, you may want to check it again because we adjusted a couple of things after doing our first video. So on here we have our ankle circumference. Um, that's the part just, just, above, just above your ankle bone here um, that you're going to want to measure. You can measure up higher on your leg if you're going to be doing a long sock for a different cast on number and then decrease. We're not gonna mess with that because most of the time your cuff is going to stretch to accommodate um, the size that you need. Uh, so just measure this point right here. Mine was nine inches. And then we want to measure the leg length, the leg that you would like, how long you would like your leg to be of your sock. So from here to here, that's what we're looking for, this measurement, which is at the top of your heel in the back and I like mine to be six inches. Uh, let's see, then the foot length. So I like to stand on a measuring tape because when your foot is flattened, it spreads a bit. And so you wanna get a more accurate measurement that way from the tip of your toe to the back of your heel right here. And mine was nine and three quarters inches. Now, if you were using centimeters, this, this still works, just put your centimeters in there. Um, then you need your toe length, where your toes begin to separate down here in between your toes, that's toe length. And then the ball of your foot, that's the measurement around the widest part of your foot here. Now, if you have bunions, that's not the area to measure, okay? You want to measure um, just below that. Your socks will stretch to accommodate that bunion. All right, now what do we do with this chart and these measurements. What we're going to do is I also have on our website this chart here or this uh, formula that you can print out or just look at to help you determine what number you're going to cast on. Now we talked about um, earlier when we told you about this series that you're going to want to um, get some fingering weight yarn some fingering weight sock yarn. Um, try, start with 2.25 millimeter needles and see um, if you can get eight stitches per inch. That's just a really good average stitch, stitches per inch for socks. 
Um, it doesn't have to be that, but we're just recommending that to begin. And then if you don't get that with a 2.25 millimeter, go up a size or down a needle size until you get that. So uh, my needle size is 2.25 millimeter that I use. All right, so we need to start right here with our ankle measurement. My ankle measurement was nine inches. So I'm going to write down nine, and we had eight stitches per inch. So nine times eight is 72. Then we need 10% negative ease. Why do we need negative ease? So on socks, if you have socks that are the same width around your foot and the same length of your foot, they are going to stretch and they are going to become baggy and they won't stay up on your leg. They also won't stay put on your foot and they will rub around in your shoe and wear out really quickly. So it's important on socks that you want to be long lasting and to fit well to have negative ease. So negative ease means that it's going to stretch onto your stretch around your foot not um, not be the exact same size. So this sock has a 10% negative ease. Actually, it has a little bit more. I like a little bit more than that for my socks, but this is pretty much the average that most people do. So 10% of 72 is 7.2, but we need a whole number, so we're just gonna go to seven. And then if we subtract seven, if we subtract seven from 72, then I get 65 stitches. But I don't want 65 stitches because we need it to be in a multiple of four. Because when we cast on, we want it in multiples of four for um, doing two by two rib and for when we divide front and back for the heel flap. Um, so we need to make sure we get to the closest number that is a multiple of four. And for my case, that would be 64 stitches. Now, I sometimes go down to 60 stitches, like I said, because I want more than 10% negative ease, but we're going to do 64. That is a good average number. When you look at sock patterns, the range that I typically see or use is 60, 64, 68, and 72 um, for women's socks. That's just a pretty average size. So this is a good number to start with for a lot of people just to try out knitting socks. Okay, so we know what needle size I'm using and what cast on number I am using. So let's start with casting on. So we are going to cast on 64 stitches on DPNs and 64 stitches on Magic Loop. DPNs are double pointed needles. Let me show you. I am using Knitter's Pride Nova for this pair of socks. If you are really new to knitting with DPNs, I think that Carvins are a good choice because they are grippy and have a nice tip so things will stay in place really well for you and it's a little less frustrating. But I don't have any available needles in that size right now from Carbon, so we're going to use these. Now we want to cast on um, evenly, divide our stitches evenly between four needles, and we want to keep them in multiples of four so we don't interrupt our stitch pattern. So I've already cast on 16 and 16, I need to cast on 16 more on each of these two needles. So we're doing a long tail cast on, and we already mentioned earlier in, when we recommended this series for new sock knitters that you already know how to cast on with a long tail cast on, knit and purl. And if you can do those things, then you should be able to do this with a little bit of practice. Uh, so. Long tail cast on, we have the tail coming out in the front, the yarn feeding to the yarn in the back, yarn ball in the back, and I'm just going to let these needles hang, and I'm gonna grab my next needle and start doing the next one, the next cast on. 
Once I pull this through, I'm going to hold on to that loose needle so it doesn't flop around, kind of tighten that one down. And now after this, I don't really want to tighten my, my cast on loops down because we want to have it, um, we want to have some stretch so that we can pull it over our uh, ankle and our the heel of our foot. So I've got one and we're just going to keep going. Two, not too tight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay, there's some good space between these stitches, so I know that these are going to stretch out enough. Now we're going to do the next one, so you can see that again. We don't really have to worry about these needles, they can just hang there. Grab the next needle. This part is a fiddly part, but that's okay. Get that first stitch tightened down on there and then keep going. One. Sixteen. Okay, so we now have thirty-four stitches on our needles. We need to join in the round. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. There's a lot of tricks where you slip one stitch over from one needle and one stitch over from the other knit, or where you cast on another one, knit two together. We're not going to do any of that. This is just beginning. This is just get started, learn to knit socks. We don't need to do anything fancy. And in the end, I use the tail just to join that, uh, make that join look a little bit smoother. All right, so now we want to make sure that our stitches are all laying the same direction that I create kind of this circle here, or this square here, and have all of the stitches, the cast on stitches, laying the same direction. They're all on the inside here. We need our working yarn to be on this back needle. And then I'm going to make sure my stitches stay laying the same. Let's get this straight. Stitches stay laying the same. Pick up my needle now that I need to start knitting on. And I'm going to simply start knitting. But I'm going to take the tail and the working yarn and for the first two stitches I'm going to knit them together. I'm going to hold them together. I'm going to knit two and then I'm going to drop the tail. We don't need that tail in there anymore. That's, that's holding it secure. And now I'm going to bring my yarn to the front and I'm going to purl two. And I'm going to bring it to the back and knit two. This is a two by two rib. We just continue this pattern along. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. Now DPNs, the first row or two can be really fiddly. So just be patient. And all you really need to focus on are the two needles that you're working with. The one in your right hand that you are knitting on to and the one on your left hand that you're knitting off of. That's all you need to worry about. The other ones you can just let them hang and let them flop, but they do get in the way, they get fiddly. So, oh, and I just dropped one stitch. That's okay. They get fiddly, but after you've done a couple of rows, it's much easier. And I have one stitch off.
when you get to your last stitch, the needle in the left no longer has stitches on it, it becomes your working needle. I'm going to wrap my yarn around to the back so I can knit two and begin again. I just rotate to the next needle. Now you need to make sure that your needles are laying correctly. So I wrap the needle that I just was holding in my right hand that I knit all those stitches onto. I put that in the front and my needle that has the stitches I'm working on now in the back and I start again. Knit two, purl two. Now sometimes this yarn, see how it wants to tangle around all of these needles. Just watch that and make sure that you don't catch it around any needle when you go to uh, knit. Sometimes that happens and you end up with this really strange loop. So just watch that closely. Uh, the other thing is when you are casting on, if you have a different number than 64 that you're casting on, you just want to make sure that on each needle you keep multiples of four, that you don't break it up where you have um, an odd number of needle of stitches or um, one that's just a multiple of two instead of four. Well, like I don't want to have... Um, 14 stitches on one needle because I will end with knit stitches meaning the next needle will need to start on purl and that's tricky it's tricky to start a new needle with purl um, you get laddering and it's fussy it's just really hard to do so I would readjust your stitches they don't have to be the same number on each needle when you're casting on so go ahead and feel free to adjust so I'm going to just work my way around this first row and after the first, I think actually the first two rows, everything just gets a lot more simple. So I put my yarn to the back, grab the next needle, slide the stitches to the tip, make sure that my previous needle is now in front and out of the way and that my needle that has the stitches I'm working on now is behind it. Oh, there we go, and start again. Now DPN, sometimes you end up stabbing yourself. Just be gentle, be patient. If you get frustrated, take a deep breath, pause for a minute. You don't want to Stop before you've even begun. If you get through this part, I promise it gets easier. Okay, we're at our last stitch here of this round. We finished one row. I've got my tail end here. I need to trim. I'm gonna have this hang down in the center here. And a lot of people will put a um, marker for the beginning of round like they'll hang a marker on like a progress keeper for the beginning of round. I don't need to do that. I don't feel like I need to do that because we have my tail end between these two needles. And so when I'm working, I always know that between these two needles, that's the beginning of my round. So that makes it pretty simple. So when we start this next round, we have these two 
stitches that have two yarns per stitch. We need to knit those two together as one stitch. And the next one, knit those two together as one stitch and continue on. Now, you'll see that right here when we just joined in, it's nice and tight. I don't even have to worry about it being gappy or anything. So there's, I mean, there's lots of tricks, like I said, that you can do. And I've done a lot of them, but I typically, when I knit my socks, I just start knitting. I don't do any of those tips or tricks. So you can try them, but I say when you start, just stick with the very basics and get comfortable with those. All right, so we've gone around our needles. One time we have done this first needle again and made sure that the first stitches we knit together those two yarns in each of those. And we'll just continue on knitting and purling and knitting and pur knitting, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two um, for about, I, I like to knit mine for about 20 rows or about an inch and a half. I like to have a nice substantial um, cuff. This cuff I think only has 15 and I like mine a little bit longer so I feel like that helps keep it in place a little bit more. It just grabs your leg a little bit better. So you could knit a really long cuff. You could knit the entire leg with a cuff but um, I, I recommend having a good um, chunky depth of cuff to help keep your socks in place. All right, I'm going to set these aside and we are going to cast on with Magic Loop. And I'm going to show you something I didn't show you with DPNs. All right. With these, I'm going to show you, and, and you can use this for um, any long tail cast on project. You, to determine how much yarn you need for your long tail, um, I hold the end of my yarn and I wrap it around 10 times. And this length, I'm going to multiply by the number of stitches I'm casting on. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and I'm casting on 64, um, we'll just say 64, but then I like to add hmm, about 10 inches. I like to add about 10 inches, um, and it's okay, you can add more than that. I, I don't like to waste yarn, but I would rather cut off, you know, five inches, even 10 inches of yarn than have to recast on again and again to make sure I have enough. Um, and then that's where I'm going to put my slip knot. So I've got my slip knot, and I've got my tail end, and I've got my working yarn right here, and I can start casting on. Now to cast on on Magic Loop, it's pretty simple. You just cast them all on. Now when I do it on Magic Loop, I like to hold the stitch I just cast on in place so that I don't pull it too tight. See a lot of people when they cast on how fast they are, and I'm not very fast. I've got arthritis, and um, it's just hard on my hands to cast on. So I have to readjust each time, most of the time. Sometimes I can get quite a few in a row, but I just have to keep readjusting. My hands don't grip like that really well. So sorry if it is painful to watch me cast on. I will fast forward this process. <laughs> stitches on my needle. The next step, 
And if you see, I've got got about 10 inches left. So that extra 10 inches, I'm, I'm glad I had it. Um, I don't need quite that long now for my tail. I'm gonna just trim off some of that so it's not in the way. And now I am going to slide all of these stitches to the middle of my cord here. And then I'm going to find the middle of my stitches. Um, once again, I want it to be in multiples of four. So if you have, um, if you have 68 stitches, you don't want to count across um, 34 stitches. You'll want 32 stitches on one needle and you'll want the rest on the other. Or, um, you'll, you'll see what I mean here. So let me count. Two, four, six, eight, 32. Okay, I've got the center of my stitches. I'm going to keep that in place. I'm going to bend my needle and I'm going to pull it through the stitches. All right, and I'm going to get these on my needle. And now I need my working yarn to be on the back needle. If I lay one on top of the other, this one is my back needle, this one is my top or front needle. I want to make sure that the bottom cast on edge of my stitches are all aligned. They're all along the bottom here. And once I have that, I'm going to pull my working needle out, which is the back needle. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to separate this here. Um, I'm going to pull my working yarn on top here and I'm going to just simply knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. I could use this tail end and also do two stitches, but I don't use that for some reason in Magic Loop. Knit two, purl two. I'm just trying to help keep my stitches in place so they don't twist all around, which is why I'm holding it with my left hand here. Okay, I'm just about to the end. I'm ending with purl two. You want to end with purl two. If you end with knit two, then on the next needle, you'll have to begin by purling. And that stretches out your stitches a little bit more. You can get laddering. It's just much easier to end with purl two. So make sure your stitch count will end with purl two. And if it doesn't, then you want to readjust stitches. Okay, I'm going to pull this back needle here I'm going to flip it around and then I'm going to check my stitches and make sure once again that my cast on edge is all still aligned along the bottom am I going the same direction here let's check this here yes okay okay so I've got this tail end that's giving me grief let me see what did I do here This is how I can tell I can count my stitches because I think I have it twisted funny. I'm going to get it in the place that I believe I need it to be. I'm going to count my stitches and then I'll know. Yep, I've got that in the right spot. Okay, so we're going to just do this again one more time. Pull the back needle out, put it
put it under my working yarn so I can begin knitting. If I start with purling, I don't want it under that working yarn. I'm actually using size zero needles, which is um, two millimeter. The other ones I cast on with the DPNs were 2.25, but I'm working with a different stitch, uh, with a different gauge in this sock. Um, and that's because it's going to be a tighter sock. So the formula I gave you earlier, you can use for any gauge that you want. So if you have a gauge that you are knitting and it is um, nine stitches per inch instead of 10, oh, I did one knit too many. Let's undo that. If it's nine stitches per inch, you just readjust your formula and cast on the number of stitches according to your formula. You can use it for thicker yarn, a thinner yarn, thinner needles. That's the great thing with knitting is that it is adjustable you can get the perfect fit. Okay, oh, I'm splitting, there we go. Okay, I went around, all the way around one time. I'm going to bring my working needle to the back again, make sure my stitches are straight. And now here's the thing that will sometimes irritate people. This stitch between your two needles it's stretched out. As Soon as I knit this next stitch, it's going to be just the same. It's going to be the same tension and you won't even know that that one was stretched out. So, knit two, purl two. Let me get a little ways and then I'll show you how it looks. See, it's just, oh, can you see that? It's just fine. So there's no need to stress about it. Um, and just like with DPNs, when I get to the end of a needle, I know where my beginning of round is because of this tail. I don't really need a progress keeper or stitch marker to mark the beginning of round. So I will sometimes use these um, to measure points in the sock, like every 10 rows on the leg to help measure. Or sometimes I'll put it on because I'll measure which one is the front needle and which is the back needle. So I might hang this on one side. This one's a bit big to use right now. Um, and for something lightweight, this is better for a heavier weight one. But this is a good way to help keep track of your front needle and your back needle um, if you get confused on that. Um, I like to track progress when I'm feeling like I'm not getting anywhere when I'm just doing stockinette stitch. I put a progress keeper where I've begun, and when I've finished, I see how much progress I have. So I really enjoy that. Okay, so we're just gonna continue on knitting this cuff, two by two rib, um, for as long as you like. I mentioned I like to have 20, in, uh, 20 rounds for my cuff. Um, and after that, we are going to just knit, not knit pearl, um, we're just knitting. We're doing stockinette stitch and I'm going to grab the sock that we have as an example here. See already I've just gone around one and a half times and this is getting so much more simple. The first the first row is always the fiddly one but after this it just gets so much easier. Um, oh I didn't show the needles I'm using here. This is Chiagu Red Lace. Um, this cable for some reason is a little bit more stiff than most of my Chiagu red lace. It's it's not quite as smooth right here. Um, the great thing is that I can take these back and exchange them at my local yarn shop that they will do that for me. So uh, this is the only pair I've ever had any issue with and I like using these because the cable doesn't want to flip all over. Um, I, I'll use other needles and I feel like the cable is always like a spring and it's just getting in my way. So I like these for knitting socks. Uh, so this next part that we're going to do after we've finished our cuff, 
for however many rounds you want, um, then we're just going to knit. And that will give you this stockinette stitch here. Um, we talked about the length of the leg that you want. And you're going to measure from the cuff down to where your needles are to get that measurement. And then you want to add about an inch, especially if you have one that's longer, like six inches. Um, if you have maybe a three inch leg that you want, maybe you only need to add half an inch because what happens is it's going to stretch around your leg and that stretch is going to shorten the length. So you need to add a little bit to keep the length that you want. So remember that when you are determining how long to knit your leg. So a couple of questions that we've had are, which do I, you prefer? Do you prefer DPNs or Magic Loop for knitting socks for a beginner? And honestly, I feel like this is personal preference. Um, I feel like DPNs are really fiddly for the first row. Just almost, you know, really quite frustrating for the first row. And after that, I really enjoy it because it seems like you make a lot of progress because you're just knitting this many stitches. And you're like, ooh, I finished a needle, ooh, I finished a needle. You know, it's, it's nice and satisfying that way. Um, but it can be fiddly for the first little bit. Um, I like DPNs, especially for when you are doing the heel flap and the heel turn and gusset. I feel like it's uh, it really helps spread the stitches out and it, it just makes it easy to work on DPNs, that portion of it. Um, but it can be frustrating to begin. So if you can, can be patient and get through that beginning part, just a little bit of the beginning part, um, I really enjoy working with these. The other thing is though, this needle sometimes wants to fall and get lost. I've lost several in my car, <laughs> never to be found again. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but I, I do like DPNs and I feel like they're a good change when my hands get tired. I usually knit with Magic Loop. Um, just, I don't know, I just gravitate towards that one, I, probably because it's not so fiddly for me, but people will get frustrated with the cable and the join, depending on what type of needle that you are using and getting confused as to which needle do I pull out and what do I do with it when I get started, like under the yarn or over the yarn. But really it's, it's the same thing as with DPNs. Once you get the hang of it for the first couple of rounds, it's just really a lot more simple. Yeah, you have to adjust your stitches by pulling out the back loop and, and adjust with the cable. But with DPNs, I'm, I'm having to adjust a lot as well. So I really feel like it's personal preference. Start with the one that you are used to knitting on and then try the other one and see what you think. I started with DPNs, I really enjoyed DPNs and then I switched to Magic Loop and it's almost like I forgot DPNs existed until the last few months where I've picked them up again. Um, so I want to make sure I've answered all of the questions that we had previously. I think so. So. Um, Emily, um, she is on Instagram as Salt City Knits and on Ravelry. She will be covering the Magic Loop or, or the DPN um, series now from here on out. And I will be covering the, what did I say? DPNs. Emily will be covering the DPNs. I will be covering the Magic Loop. Um, would love if you share your progress on Instagram or on social media with the hashtag MyFirstSocksCal and go join in our Ravelry group where you can chatter in the thread there. Tell us how you're doing, um, ask questions, but just share what you're doing. We just love to hear from you and we love to uh, help inspire knitters to be sock knitters because we find it so satisfying. So thank you so much for joining us and I will see you for Magic Loop for part two next time on March 4th at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time here on YouTube. Thank you.